There is a simple blood test that because of insurance company restrictions are often not included in your standard labs. There is so much that this test can tell you about your risk of heart disease and diabetes and metabolic syndrome and it gives you a huge heads up. Keep watching and I will tell you all about C-reactive protein, how to lower this number and how to significantly reduce your risk factors. Stick with me. So, hey there, beautiful people. This is Lindy Ford, registered dietitian, clinical and licensed nutritionist and nutrition detective. Could you just take a minute and just mash that like button? And I would just so appreciate that. And one thing I'm really gonna ask you to do with this video, I've not really asked this with any other video, is to share this. This information, actually, I'm not being dramatic, could save someone's life and you're going to find out why. So please share this video, share it with all your health groups, your church groups, your community groups. It is so important for me to get this information out. Please subscribe to this channel and like me on all the social media outlets except for Twitter. And just to let you know what our mission is here at Lindy Ford Nutrition and Wellness, and that is to reveal to you the truth about nutrition and lifestyle choices that will lead you to greater freedom. We're all about freedom here. So what are we talking about today? We are talking about something called C-reactive protein. Now, I'm just going to be calling it CRP in the future. So what is it? It's a substance made by the liver in response to inflammation. Could be infection, cancer, uh, heart disease, diabetes, metabolic syndrome, viruses. Just stick with me to the end though because I am going to give you a whole bunch of ways, effective ways, things that I have used in my practice that have been so effective in lowering this number, not just lowering this number, but getting your risk factors for all of these terrible things down. It's so exciting. So there are two types of CRP tests. One is quantitative. I never ask for this test. I always, you will de by default get that test if you don't ask for the next one. It's, it's okay, but it's just not specific. It can tell you a little bit about injury and maybe some inflammation is systemic inflammation in your body, but it's not very specific. Ask for the high sensitivity or cardiac CRP. You have to ask for it specifically. It targets actually inflammation in the arteries. It, it tells it's predictive of cardiovascular disease and peripheral vascular disease, which is harden, hardening of the arteries, metabolic syndrome, even some cancer risk. These are huge red flags that will help you in conjunction with other labs to really know your risk. Every lab has different normal levels. So you need to really look at, I guess you would say functional levels. If things get too high, and this is backed up, everything in this video is backed up with good studies. It's actually milligrams by liter is what you wanna look at. If your lab doesn't do that, you're gonna to have to do that conversion. But less than one is really where you wanna go. 1.5, not too bad, but anywhere from one to three is a little red flag. That means you, actually bigger than you think, red flag. That means that you need to sit up and take notice that something is wrong in your body. Over three, you have a huge risk for a cardiovascular event or some type of infection in your body. Don't panic if that happens. I have seen my patients get those. I've had people as high as 9, 10, 15, and they have gotten them to normal with the things that I'm going to tell you about at the end. But take it very seriously and look at it with the other labs. A CRP is infinitely better than just an overall cholesterol or even an LDL because some of that LDL can actually be the good cholesterol. If you have high CRP, low HDL, high triglycerides and belly fat, you need to change immediately. Even the American Heart Association is saying that increased levels over that three milligrams per, per liter give, gives you a great risk of having a heart attack incident in the next 10 years. So what can you do? 
oh so much so much and that's why I'm so excited to bring you this video I have seen miracles in my practice with lifestyle changes and nutrients and I have seen those CRPs drop in six months like stones if you incorporate these things and I am saving for each list. I'm gonna tell you my lifestyle choices or changes that I would like you to make for dropping CRP, but also some nutrients that, that really help in dropping CRP. And also, I am gonna leave my favorite and most effective lifestyle choices and supplements to the end. Okay, so lifestyle choices. Quit smoking, duh, right? Consistently exercise. I'm gonna link a video below on how to incorporate easily incorporate consistent exercise. Drink organic coffee. Yes, there's a good study with that. Also, lower your belly fat. That visceral fat is a metabolic machine and it is dangerous. It is so much more dangerous than high cholesterol. So I've done two belly fat videos. I'm going to link them below. Eliminate polyunsaturated omega-6 inflammatory oils. You must eliminate those. Look for them. Soybean oils of the world, corn oil, vegetable oil, all of those things. Increase CRP lower your insulin levels. Talk about it in every single video and I'm not gonna stop. That means you need to lower your carb load in your diet. Increase your omega-3 foods. I did a video on that. I'm gonna link it below. And eat, my favorite is eat a nutrient-dense diet. And that is really the foundation of that are those low glycemic vegetables because those low glycemic vegetables are gonna give you, I think, well, I know, the vitamin C and the magnesium that we know does lower CRP. So here is my list of supplements. And all of these supplements you can get on Wellivate and Fullscript, which is actually going to be merging with Wellivate. You can use my dispensary and get that 20% off that gives you that extra savings. All of these are also backed up with research and I'm saving my favorite to last. Number one is vitamin C. Of course, I want you to get it from the vegetables. Actually, vegetables more than fruits. But if you want to supplement with a little vitamin C, you can. I like the quercetin plus vitamin C by Integrative Therapeutics. Magnesium. Yes, I, I do like magnesium from food, but also there are forms of magnesium that you can take in a supplement that is really well absorbed, like glycinate, three and eight, tarate. So I really like the Douglas brand, or I do have my own magnesium glycinate. Then vitamin D and K2, both lower CRP. I like them in one product by protocol. It's a vitamin D and K2 product. And probiotics also lower CRP. My favorite probiotics these days are the soil-based organisms or they're called SBO. And I use the ones by Ancient Nutrition. And then there's CoQ10, the ubiquinol kind, really any brand is fine for CoQ10. And then curcumin, love me some curcumin. I think it's better absorbed than turmeric. And I did a video on that, I'm gonna link it below, but I like the product Thera Curcumin because it's better absorbed because it's in that colloidal base than regular curcumin. Also, of course, omega-3s. Of course, I like you to eat omega-3s and all of these great fatty fish foods, but I really think that supplementation is a, is a good idea if you are struggling with CRP. So try all of those lifestyle and supplement changes, and I am so excited about you getting that CRP down. Share this video, like this video, and I will see you in the next video.